Hey everyone, today we're building a web app to summarize and get the gist out of product review videos on YouTube. I was inspired to make this app because I realized before I make a technological purchase, what I do is always to go to YouTube and watch some review videos. And these videos are made by people whose life it is to compare these products. They know features that I know nothing about. They have criteria that I'm completely not familiar with. And that's exactly why these videos are worth watching. But if you don't have the time to watch these videos and you still wanna get the gist of the information, you can use this app. You only need to give it the name of the product that you want to analyze the reviews of and then select which videos you want to analyze and it will give you a pros and cons list. And if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can find the code on our GitHub. I will leave the link in the description for you. Just a heads up, I will be using Assembly AI's LLM framework, Lemur, in this tutorial. To get access to Lemur, you need to create an Assembly AI account at assemblyai.com and get an API key. And you need to add your credit card information because Lemur is a paid feature. But I will show you just how paid it is. I have been working on developing this app for the last couple of days and you can see the amount of calls that I made to Lemur. I had to try, of course, uh, over and over again to build this app. And overall, it cost me $1, uh, well, let's say one and a half dollars one day, uh, around 40 cents another day, and around a dollar the next day even though I was trying it repetitively. So I think it's a good investment to start with and experiment with, but without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. So this is a biggish project. Uh, I built it on Streamlit, and as you might imagine, there is a backend section of it and there's a front-end section of it. The front-end section is built with Streamlit. Um, I don't wanna go over the Streamlit code to make this easier to follow. If you want to code, you can find it on GitHub. GitHub. All of it is there and um, Streamlit code is really easy to understand anyways, generally. Let me just walk you through what we're going to uh, do on the code. So at first we need to get a keyword from the user and then I'm going to show you how to use this keyword um, to get the links of videos where that keyword is mentioned from YouTube. And then we're going to display those videos to the user and then have them select some videos. That's going to be on the Streamlit side. And then we're going to get the links of those selected videos, strip the audio and save them. And then we're going to send these saved audio files to Assembly AI's transcription. And then finally, we're going to start the analysis of these transcriptions using Lemur. And through Lemur, we will be using the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. On the GitHub page, you're going to see uh, multiple sporting files on top of the main.py streamlit file. Um, the first one is grabbing videos. So I'll show you how this one works. We have the set search YouTube function. In the search YouTube function, you need a couple of things. Well, we're going to be using the YouTube data API and the application that runs on vidgis.onrender.com, I already provide a um, YouTube data API for the users to search with. But if you want to build this yourself, you might need to go get a YouTube data API key for yourself. Um, here, there is a certain search URL. This is basically how you interact with the YouTube data API. Uh, I want to search on YouTube and I want to get 10 results. I want them ordered by relevance and I'm passing a search phrase to it. And of course, I also need to pass my API key. The search phrase is something I put together on the front end side. I get a keyword from the user, for example, Dyson V15, and then I paste the word reviews uh, after it. So then what I'm searching for is whatever the user inputs plus reviews. Uh, through requests library, we are sending a request to this URL, and then we get JSON response in return. So let me show you what that JSON response looks like. All right, so I'm debugging this um, function to see what it looks like here. We sent a request, and then we got video data, uh, and then I got the items from this video data. So we're looking at raw search results here, and the raw search results are basically a list, it's a list with a length of 10, where each element is a video. It has the video ID in here, 
inside the snippet, we have some more information. So for example, when this video was published, the channel ID that published this video, the title of this video, description, uh, even thumbnails are attached here, channel title, um, and some other information. So what I want to do is to get only the relevant information from that jumble of data. So for that, I've created a extract video data function. Through the extract video data function, I extract the title, link, description, thumbnail, channel name, channel link um, from that list. And then I create a dictionary, pasting all the information per video. And then I do that for all the results and then I can return the all videos dictionary or list of dictionaries back to my front end. On the front end side, I will be using the Streamlit data editor to display these um, results. So let's see what that looks like on the front end. So this is what the data editor looks like. It's just a way to display your data frame but you can also make some changes. So you can add a select column. You will see that in the streamlet side of this application. Uh, and then I can select a bunch. Let's say I selected three and then I will be able to extract that information and have a list of selected columns or selected rows from this data frame. Once I've done that, the next step is to strip the audio from these YouTube videos. And to do that, we're going to create a new file. I'll just simply call it strip audio.py. This one is fairly simple. I'm only using the YouTube download, I think, um, library. And once again, I will debug this one. So to this function, I'm passing each YouTube URL one by one. And then to create a file name, I am getting the last, I think, 11 characters in the URL and then adding mp3 to create a file name. And then we just download the audio by passing it the URL here and telling this library to save it under file name. And then we will see how that download is progressing here. Once the download is completed, I can also return the file name back to my front end so I know where to find this audio file. Once that's done, now I have the audio files saved in my system. The next thing I have to do is to send these audio files for transcription to Assembly AI. If you've been watching Assembly AI tutorials, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but let's quickly go through it. I will call this LLM results. The first function I will be calling would be the transcribe function. Um, you are probably familiar with this. We need to set our Assembly AI API key and then create a transcriber and then transcribe based on a file name or a URL. Uh, and in return, we will get a transcript ID once this transcription is done. And after that's done, I will start a group analysis. Thanks to Lemur, we do not have to create pros and cons lists for each video separately and then try to bring them together. We can just feed Lemur all the videos that the user has selected and then create an overall pros and cons list based on all of these videos. So we can just tell it to select the most relevant 10 pros and 10 cons. So I'll show you, it's just a couple of lines of code, very easy. Um, I will be passing a list of transcript IDs to this function. And then I will create a transcript group through assembly AIs. Python SDK, I will pass it the ID list. And over this transcript group, I will be calling Lemur from the task endpoint. This is an endpoint where you can specify any task that you want to be completed by Lemur. My prompt is create a list of pros about the product at hand commonly mentioned in these video reviews, limited to 10 most relevant points, only return the pros as a list, do not return any other text. I have a similar one for the cons too. Uh, I want to get them separately so they're easier to display. Otherwise, I will get, I could have said, give me a pros and cons list, but then I would have to do some string operation to separate them and display them uh, separately. But instead, I figured I could uh, do it this way too. Uh, I will pass the prompt to, to the Lemur task endpoint and I can select the final model. So Assembly AI supports a bunch of LLMs. The Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is the latest edition. If you want to see what other models you can use, you can go to assembly AI docs. 
and in the customized parameters, you are able to see a list of all the models that you can use. So we will be using the cloud 3.5 today. Once these are done, we are returning the response both from the pros and cons to our front end. So let's see how that runs. And after Lemur is done running, we get a nice pros and cons list because we wanted 10 of them, we get 10 pros and 10 cons. For example, for the prawns for Dyson V15, which is a vacuum cleaner, you get powerful suction and airflow, excellent deep cleaning performance on carpets, effective on both carpets and hard floors, laser slim fluffy cleaner head for visualizing dust on hard floors. But on the other hand, you have a expensive price point, short battery life, need to hold down trigger continuously to operate, heavy and can strain wrist arm during extended use. And a couple more. This is just the beginning of what's possible uh, with Lemur. You can develop this tool to include a comparison of two different products, for example, or ask the LLM to judge how critical each pro and con is so you can have a better understanding of what you should pay attention to and what's not that important. There's just so much to do when you have the possibility of working with such powerful large language models at your fingertips. And just to put things into context, my use just now with Lemur cost me $0.053 uh, to analyze three YouTube videos of length about 10 minutes each. If you like building projects with LLMs, go take a look at this other tutorial where we teach you how to make a voice to voice translator that can generate your own voice in more than 30 languages. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have a question, leave a comment down below or create an issue on the GitHub page. I hope you liked this tutorial and I will see you in the next video.